Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today we're talking latency. Latency, what is it? Because I've got some videos coming up where I'm using the oscilloscope, a few other bits and pieces to show you what the actual latency numbers are on a lot of these radios, the old Turnergy 9X, the new uh, Free Sky Tyrannus, the JRXG8, and the Hitech Aurora 9, which is a fairly good selection across the board. So, but before I show you or measure the latency figures, I've got to tell you what latency is. Some people don't quite understand what latency is. Latency, to put it simply, Latency is the time it takes for, for example, if you move your throttle from full to idle, it's the time it takes for the servo to respond. Simple as that. In a high latency system, it might take quite a long time. So if you're hitting vertically towards the ground and you pull on full elevator, if you've got a system that has a lot of latency, it may not respond quickly enough and you may be taking home a bag of hurt. However, a fast latency system, it might respond quickly enough just to save your bacon. So that's the difference. Now, of course, the latency figures we're talking about, we're not talking seconds, minutes, or hours, we're talking thousandths of a second. So in reality, it's probably not gonna save your bacon if you're you know, six inches above the ground and you realize you've gotta have full up elevator to save the model. It's not that much of a deal. But if you're doing stuff like 3D, or other, maybe pylon racing, I don't know, things where you need a lot of rapid input, uh, where you need to have your input time precisely, then latency can make a difference. I know when I fly a 3D profile, I like 3D profiles, love 3D, when I fly it with a low latency radio, it feels like the whole thing is so much more responsive because it reacts more quickly to my control inputs. When I fly with a high latency radio, it feels kind of sluggish. It feels like it's, you know, in mired and treacle or something. But the interesting thing is that your brain soon adapts. So if I'm flying with a high latency radio and I'm hovering, you know, pretty soon I'm in the groove, no problem at all. If I switch to a high latency radio, oh, sorry, a low latency radio, a fast radio, then I tend to be over controlling everywhere because I'm, you know, I'm anticipating the inputs required too quickly and before the model's even needing those inputs and you end up all over the place until after a few minutes of practice, yeah, it all, your brain adjusts and suddenly it's just like you were using the other radio. So latency is a figure that manufacturers who have very low latency tend to say, well, latency is really important. Manufacturers that have high latency say, no, it doesn't matter that much. I'm kind of in the middle. If you're flying sport stuff, you know, your average trainer, your AXN, you know, doesn't really matter too much at all. Your brain will soon adapt. If you are really a competition flyer, you're flying 3D or whatever, then yeah, go for a low latency radio because it, it will make a difference to that sort of flying. Your brain can only compensate so much and you know, having that immediate response is very important. But latency is the sum of many things. Now, we talk about the latency of your transmitter, your radio system. Well, actually, to be honest, it's not the biggest factor. It really, really isn't because all this electronic stuff happens really quickly. And typically, latency of a radio system like this might be, say, 25 milliseconds, 25 thousandths of a second between when you move a stick and the signal reaches the servo to tell the servo to move. Now that's pretty damn, that's a pretty short period of time. It's much less than the time it takes to blink. But that's when the real latency kicks in because once the servo has been told you need to move, well then it has a lot of work to do. It's got to energize the motor which starts spinning, but there's a lot of inertia in these little motors. They have a iron cord motor in the cheap ones and that has to be accelerated up to rotational speed and you've got, you might have a, a big control surface hanging off the arm that's extra weight and all that stuff is inertia so it takes a lot of force to overcome the momentum and start it moving and now we're talking, in fact typically on a servo like this, it might, the, the transit time as it's called, that's the time it takes to move from one, uh, the centre position to 60 degrees is normally a measurement, the time it takes for that to turn 60 degrees is typically measured in hundredths of a second. So this might be, I think this is about a 0.18 or a 0.19 seconds. So it's 190 milliseconds. Compare that to 25 milliseconds and you can see where the real latency comes in. You can, can of course get faster servos. This is a cordless servo, cordless digital servo. It's quite a bit quicker because the motor itself is much lighter. The, the internal armature is, or it's actually an external armature. It doesn't have steel in it. It's just uh, wound, uh, windings of wire. So it's very light. So it accelerates quickly and it'll stop quickly. Well, that does have a metal gear train, which will slow it down more again. So ah, what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like when we sort of look at the latency. I'll set this up here, set up the radio. Now, the camera I'm using, the Sony, what is it, 760 something or other? I'll put a little thing on here because I can never, why don't they give them decent names like Fred or Bob? But anyway, I'll put, this is the camera I'm using down here, see? Which was kindly supplied by Sony. Big thumbs up to Sony, thank you for that. But it's got a really, really cool feature that I haven't shown you before. I'm going to show you now. It has a high speed video thing. So 
it'll actually record video at a much higher frame rate. So when I play it back, it'll be nice and smooth and slow, and it'll slow everything down, slow motion. So now I'm gonna set this up so that when I move the servo, or when I move my throttle stick here, the servos will respond, but you'll be able to see just how much delay there is because it's all slowed down. I thought that was quite a good idea. Anyway, we'll start with the standard servo and see how that goes. And now we'll take a look at the Corliss digital servo, see if that's any quicker. So as you can see, the servos do make a difference. It's a, it's a small difference, but it's an important one, and it is quite a bit more than the actual radio itself. So if you're looking for a low latency system, you've got to have a radio that has low latency. And by low, I mean somewhere between 7 and 11 milliseconds. And you've got to have fast servos, which generally means coreless digital servos. And they have to be strong enough to accelerate the control surface and stop it quickly enough. If you have, you can have the fastest servo in the world, but if it doesn't have enough torque, it's going to move really slowly, You'll probably burn out as well. So that's the basis of latency. And so we're looking at the latency in our radio, of course, and we're going to say so we're going to test a number of radios in the next video so you can see them. And of course, the things that cause latency are all the processing and goings on inside the radio. So something that's worth knowing is if you've taken an older radio like the Turnigy and you've put a 2.4 gig DIY or a module in the back, it's going to have higher latency than the radio like the FreeSky Tyrannus, which has the 2.4 built into it. And the same goes, that's why Spectrum have a low latency, that's why the JRXG8 has a low latency. Because with these older radios, we actually have to end up doing something and then undoing it to get the signal out the aerial, which is kind of cockeyed really. But when we move a stick on our radio, it rotates a little potentiometer. You've seen those in some of the teardown videos. It's like the knob on your radio, you know, of the old radios where you turn it up, turn it down. Same thing in here. Moving the stick activates a little potentiometer, and all that does really is send a voltage out to the microcontroller inside the radio. So, well, the sun's coming and going today. So when I have the stick up there, it might be, say, two volts. When I have it down there, it might be one volt. And by measuring the voltage, the microcontroller on there knows where the stick is, and it can then take that voltage and what it does is, if you've got 2.4 built in, it turns that voltage straight into a number, which was a position of the stick, and sends it out the antenna. So whoop, out it goes real quick, really quick. And an older radio like this with a module or a DIY, the radio itself turns that voltage into a pulse, a pulse of a variable length. So when the servo's in the middle position, the pulse is 1.5 milliseconds long. And when it's at one extreme, it's two milliseconds. At the other extreme, it's one millisecond. So the pulse gets bigger and smaller, I'll show you on the scope when I do the latency test, what that looks like. Most of you have probably seen it anyway. But it means the voltage is turned into a pulse, and then the DIY kit or the module takes that pulse and turns it into a number. So we've got that extra step in there, the pulse in between, and that takes time. And because the pulse is a finite length, and there are a finite number of them, you add up the lengths of those pulses uh, times the number of them, and you get a big delay. That's where the extra latency comes in with a module-based or a DIY-based 2.4. That's why they don't have the ultra-low latency of things like the Tyrannus or the Spectrum or the JR or the Futaba Fast. So uh, with the built-in 2.4, of course. Same goes, if you've got a Futaba 9C and you've got a plug-in fast module, it's going to be slow too. It's going to have a high latency because that intermediate step required to go from a voltage to a pulse to a number. Whereas internally, it just goes from a voltage to a number, and then it's out the aerial. So there you go. So what I'll be doing in the next video is putting all these radios side by side, and we'll put the scope on, the oscilloscope, so I'll show you also where the, the pulses look like in these module-based solutions. And we'll also look at the um, time it takes for, we'll set up a switch probably, time it takes for when you throw a switch, for the signal at the receiver, the other end here at the receiver, for the signal to change here. And that's the latency from the transmitter to the receiver. And a few of the reviews coming up, or a few of the sort of videos coming up, what I've done is I've built a test rig, it's over there somewhere under a cover, a test rig which I'm taking a lot of these different servos because there are so many on the market, putting them all in there, I'm going to measure things like latency, accuracy, linearity, and all those things, current draw, but that's a future project I've been working on for an awful long time, just haven't got around to it. In the meantime, that's all about latency. If you've got any questions, put them on the bottom of the video. If you've got any comments, well, put them on the video too, and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And I will go back to doing the video for all the different radios, showing you and measuring the latency, so you'll know which ones are fastest, which ones are best. But in the meantime, if you've got a Turnigy 9X or a 9XR and you've got a FreeSky module in it or a DIY, don't worry, 
you're not really missing out on much unless you really fly, you know, sort of um, pedal to the metal or really, really hard 3D. Then you might notice a difference. But in the meantime, your AXN won't know. Thanks for watching. See you again soon on RC Model Reviews. Thumbs up if you like it. <laughs>